What did the Cathars eat? Find out tonight on Talk Gnosis. Welcome to Talk Gnosis for October 30th, 2013. I'm Bishop Ken Canterbury, and joining me as usual is my lovely co-host, Bishop Lanny Peterson. Hello, Lanny. Hello, Bishop Ken. How are you tonight? Good. Well, I'm pretty excited about tonight. Uh, we're continuing yep. our diet and spirituality. Uh, this is going to be our second part of this, and this is mm -hmm. going to be a continuing series. And uh, we are joined tonight by Bishop Philip Garver of the Eglise Gnostique. Welcome, Bishop Garver. Thank you very much Welcome. for joining us this evening. Well, thank you for inviting me. So let me ask you a little bit um, before we get into the diet, so maybe you can enlighten some of our viewers who may not be familiar with the Cathar. Can uh, you maybe give a little bit brief history of them? Oh, goodness gracious. <clears throat> a brief history is, is difficult. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> um, the Cathars... Um, the term Cathar actually came about much later in history. Um, in the Middle Ages, in the 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th centuries, even the, up to the 14th century, which was sort of the final era of, of Catharism as we know it, they were mm -hmm. frequently referred to, uh, they were referred to as um, Manichaeans, which is actually a false, um, false appellation. Mm -hmm. um, but... But in history, in his historical terms, they're probably most widely known um, by the term of Albigensians. And many historians will be familiar with in mm -hmm. church history, particularly in Europe, of the Albigensian Crusade. Mm -hmm. They are a pseudo-Protestant, I would say, sect of the um, Middle Evil period. <clears throat> and it was a form of... Uh, what I would call Gnosticism, even though again that's a modern term, mm -hmm. that came about. That came about, and uh, the oral tradition is that it was a tradition that was passed down from the original apostles through the spiritual transitions from the Middle East in as they expanded um, to uh, Europe, mm -hmm. and it was a particular tradition that denounced the dependence upon, the reliance upon, and the attraction to material goods and material beings, um, uh, material welfare, as it were. And mm -hmm. uh, so it was a spiritual tradition that was in opposition to what was then the Church of Rome, with its opulence and its vestments and the, as uh, sort of as we refer to it, the smells and bells of the Catholic Church. Um, they really wanted to get to the basic message of the Christ and in bringing people to salvation through the simplest means necessary, even though those particular means had some serious um, serious requirements to them. You had mm -hmm. to be really, really a devout individual and willing to give up those material connections in order to be really involved and absorbed into the Cathar tradition. Mm. Uh, there were uh, essentially three different levels. You had sort of the perfecti, which were the individuals who had um, accepted this uh, particular rule, which was very similar to a monastic rule, um, often referred to as the rule of justice and truth. And then you had those other individuals that were um, sort of followers or, or um, 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 members of the larger congregation. And then you had the other individuals who were one step further away, who were tolerant of the Cathars, but not necessarily um, part of the, the larger congregation. Okay. Now, as I seem to recall, there, uh, at, at certain levels, the Cathars, there had to be changes in, well, diet, which we're going to talk about tonight, but they were also celibate. 
That is correct. Okay. And so we're talking tonight about diet, and you follow a Cathar diet. Um, could you tell us about that? Well, I want to... <laughs> Just, just to be absolutely clear, I aspire to a Cathar diet. Okay. Um, I, 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 I am a flawed human being, as are we all, and mm -hmm. I am working my way diligently toward a Cathar diet. But essentially, in a nutshell, as it were, the Cathar diet would be essentially <laughs> vegan plus fish. Okay. Okay, so um, no dairy or eggs, but they are allowed fish. That is correct. So there, there are several different, several different terms that you could do an internet search on to see individuals who actually today still follow this kind of diet. It would be um, a pesco vegan, if you wanted to call it that, or a, an aqua vegan, or even a, instead of a vegan, they call it a seagan, S-E-A-G-A-N. Mm, okay. I don't think I've ever heard that term. I, 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 which I find actually kind of a little bit humorous, <laughs> but it gets it gets to the point. Vegan plus fish, right? Hmm. And can is has there ever been uh, an explanation of, for example, I, I understand that uh, the Christian Church historically has uh, encouraged people to undergo partial fast or to eliminate certain food groups, but why is the flesh of fish acceptable, but not that of other animals? Do you know? Well, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up because um, there have been several individuals throughout the course of history, particularly historians that are interested in Catharism, mm -hmm. um, that have brought this up. Um, there are interpretations which specifically indicate that warm-blooded creatures are the, the creatures that are not allowed to be consumed. Mm -hmm. um, although cold-blooded creatures are are okay in in in, in some way um, to 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 be uh, consumed, um, okay. even though the even though the Cathars themselves were wholly based upon the New Testament, mm -hmm. if you look if you if you look at the um, the Old Testament Genesis creation story, the Spirit of God descended and hovered over the waters. So the spirit of God did not infuse anything that was within the waters themselves. Hmm. Okay. Um, one of the other interpretations is that um, it was nothing could be consumed that was brought about by sexual relations, um, and so since fish oh. are were understood to you know, they, they lay their eggs and then they are fertilized outside of having actual intercourse, per se, mm -hmm. um, that, that, that they could be consumed in that way as well. Hmm. well that is so, really so, fascinating. <laughs> so, so there are a lot of different interpretations about that. Um, but um, the, the larger point in question really has to do with, aside from those factors, the cold-blooded versus warm-blooded and the hovered over the waters and, and, and etc., it was really reliant upon the commandment that thou shalt not kill, period. Okay. Well, I got a question for you then. I mean, if, sure. if it's kind of around the question of thou shalt not kill, um, I know... I wouldn't call them vegans, but I've got vegetarian friends who, who uh, consume dairy. Um, I have some that object to eggs, but dairy they feel is okay. They, they'll eat uh, milk products. They'll eat uh, various uh, cheeses. Um, and I would think kind of with the locale of uh, France that, uh, you know, cheese would have been pretty common even, uh, you know, back in that period. Um, was there a specific reason that they um, would not have consumed dairy? Because if they're trying not to kill, well, you're not killing an animal to produce this milk. Well, the answer to that is sort of twofold. Mm -hmm. in, in, in part... It was a medieval mindset that the production of milk was directly related to sexual intercourse resulting in an infant offspring which required the milk to be produced by the mother. 
Gotcha. Okay. The other aspect is that uh, matière grasse, um, uh, animal fat, mm -hmm. was the one thing to be absolutely avoided. And so, so fat coming from animal sources was mm -hmm. avoided at all costs. And the only exceptions to that were seafood and oil, specifically olive oil, you know, from the, from the particular region. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Uh, you know, we're going to ask for some a, a book and web website recommendations after we talk a little bit more. And I, I want to get some, I want to do some more research on this now because I'm kind of fascinated. And was the, um, was the objection to eggs related to the fact, because related to uh, the idea that the eggs are part of conception or what was the objection to eggs? It was the same issue in that it was understood that eggs were produced by conception as well as the fact that an egg is essentially nothing but animal fat. Okay. So it, right. was, it was both again. And interesting, related to that, honey. <clears throat> honey was not consumed because it was thought in terms of the medieval mindset that honey was also a product of sexual relations among the bees. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I had no idea about this. Actually, I am now really, really curious about how uh, these folks thought about diet and, and everything. I, I'd never really thought about it that way. That, that's, that's very, very interesting. Um, right. it, 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 it doesn't necessarily coincide with current knowledge and current awareness yeah. in science. However, mm -hmm. that, wa that was the medieval mindset at the time. Hmm. Fascinating. I learned, I've actually learned quite a bit in the past few minutes. Thank you so much, Bishop Carver. Um, sure I do thing. want to ask, are, are members of your particular church, the Iglesia Gnostic, are they obligated to, fo to follow this diet? Absolutely not. Okay. It, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is individuals who are just members of the congregation are encouraged to follow it, this particular diet, but they are in no way required to. Okay. It is a. It is in, in in my particular case. It is a it is a personal choice. It mm -hmm. was a spiritual choice, and for me, it was a result of a very very dark period in my life when everything was starting to fall apart, and uh, I had I had been furloughed from my job. Um, I had a falling out with several individuals and organizations with which I had been involved. And I finally realized that I needed to take my spirituality seriously. Sure. Well, that kind of then brings me up to uh, one of our next questions. Is that how has this really impacted your spirituality? Um, you know, I know that within many of the traditions that we share that... Uh, uh, some of the esoteric traditions have very strict dieting. Um, this specifically, though, seems like, um, as you just mentioned, came at a kind of a very transitional period of your life. What direct results have you seen from this change in your diet, uh, Bishop uh, Garver? Have you seen that, uh, you know, what type of uh, manifestation has it made for you? It's actually been quite transformative. Um, al although, of course, as a human being, I'm still flawed and I go through mm -hmm. those peaks and valleys as we all do. <clears throat> um, I know that my own individual sense of health and well-being is greatly improved from what it was at that particular point in time in my life when I decided to transition to mm -hmm. this, this particular dietary path. Um, uh, I just a, a personal confession. I have always, I have been overweight my entire life. Sure. Um, and I have, as a result, I weigh a hundred pounds less now than I did in high school. Wow. Congratulations. That's, that's fantastic. Um, that's wonderful. <laughs> I, um, um, I, I just recently participated in a diabetes prevention study through um, the Indiana University Health um, Program. Mm -hmm. And my, my final um, blood work results um, spurred the, 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 the practitioner who was, was drawing my blood to tell me that my cholesterol levels were the best she had ever seen. 
Wow. Awesome. So, so I have absolutely no issues with cholesterol whatsoever. And, and I, I find that it, it interesting compared to other individuals who are following certain dietary practices and having issues and everything like this. So it's been, it's been fascinating because, because my family does have a history of, 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 of diabetes and heart disease. And so, you know, that was yet another component to why I decided to transition to this particular diet. And, and in general, um, it's a personal choice for me to follow this particular dietary path, but I know that my sense of well-being and my sense of spirituality and connection with the tradition is much, much stronger than it would have been had I not decided to adopt this particular dietary practice. Okay. Now, um, we're, we're going to have to wrap up in a few minutes here, but I do want to ask, um, are there some books or websites that you would recommend to our viewers who are either interested in uh, the history of the Cathars or the type of diet that you are, that you are following? Um, in terms of the dietary practice, there's not a whole lot out there in the English language, unfortunately. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there are there are many many books um, out there in French that have been written by historians. There is a um, um, uh, a, a Cathar basically library based in Carcassonne in the south of France. Some of the best known historians, at least two of the best known historians, um, who write in the French language that. Um, talk about this would be um, Anne Brenon, A-N-N-E-B-R-E-N-O-N, -N -E -N -N, Anne Brenon. Okay. And the other one would be um, Jean Duvernoy. It's uh, J-E-A-N, Jean. And then Duvernoy is D-U-V-E-R-N-O-Y. Those are probably two of the most well-known and highly respected individuals who have written particularly about the Cathar tradition. Um, there Excellent. Is, there is an English book out there um, which might be of interest to some people, um, written by Sean Martin, called The Cathars. Um, okay. And it's it's a little bit historical fiction, but it's also a little bit based in fact and everything like this, but um, it's it's very interesting out there. And the other one would be, like, I think it's cathar.info, is a website that has some basic overviews of the particular Cathar tradition. Okay. <clears throat> Great. Thank you so much. You know, sure thing. Good. And... It would be interesting, uh, you know, uh, I would think that uh, um, with all of the information that you're mentioning available in, in the French language to see, you know, either A, somebody translates some of the stuff in English for, for many of our viewers, or even maybe someone like yourself who is actually following this diet, who any of us who are friends with you on Facebook know that your love of cooking, <laughs> we see your recipes all the time, would it even be kind of nice to see, uh, you know, some of these recipes and things kind of thrown out either on a, a blog or maybe uh, maybe you may get the motivation yourself to write a, a Cathar cookbook and maybe share some of the recipes in the near future. It, it's been brought up on multiple occasions and I just have yet to find the time to actually devote myself to sure. doing so. Speaking of translations, um, I need to get back in touch with, there's a colleague of mine in France who is one of the um, founders of a society in France devoted to the uh, pursuance of an interest in Catharism, who has actually written uh, several items in French, but um, one of his most recent books, which was finally published in, I believe, 2010, Mm -hmm. uh, at one point in time, we had talked about me doing the English translation of his book, and I just need to get back in touch with him to see whether or not that deal with the publisher might still be pursuable. Uh, because it's interesting, yeah. it, talks, it talks specifically about uh, sort of a five-step path of purification and the uh, very detailed information about how eating animals is directly related to the process uh, or the, the commandment of thou shalt not kill, etc. So uh, I, have, I actually have a passage that I could forward to you that I've, that I've translated that specifically relates to the um, eating of meat and uh, thou shalt not kill, the commandment. Um, awesome. And I'd be more than happy to send to you as well um, a copy of the sort of the, the rule of justice and truth with a mini translation of justifications of each of those uh, seven particular points, which is more or less the monastic-ish type rule of the, that the Cathars happen to follow. 
Yeah, and that I would, would be I would great. love to see that. Well, we are we I do have to get wrapped up here, but if you could just hang on for a second, um, I do want to uh, m remind people that uh, we're having a viewer question special on November thirteenth. Um, you can email your questions. The bishops here, uh, Bishop Ken and I, will be happy to answer any question you have on a any reasonable topic. Uh, we'll try reasonable. and see if we can have an, we can give you an answer or an, at least an opinion. And Lord knows when Ken and I are in the same room, there's at least three opinions flying around. So, um, but you can send those to talknosis at gnosticnyc dot com. Get those sent in, and I'm looking forward to a really fun show. Um, also, uh, Bishop Garver, thank you so much. This has been a fascinating thank show. You. I, I, Very interesting. I love it. I love it when I uh, learn new things, and I've learned a lot of new things this evening, and I really appreciate that. Um, where can people find you and, and your church online? <clears throat> you can find me at uh, eglisnostique.org or nostique.net. Um, okay. I'm there online. Um, uh, Bishop Ken and, and you yourself uh, are friends with me on Facebook, so if people decide to contact you, you can forward my contact information to them as well. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer questions from individuals. Sure. Fantastic. Great. And when you get that information to us, we'll also make sure to put it on our Talk Gnosis Facebook page, along as here on our YouTube channel. Um, Absolutely. You know, again, we appreciate all feedback. Uh, please give us an email, and you can reach us on our social media on our Facebook page at Facebook Talk Gnosis. You can make sure you can find us online at YouTube. Again, Talk Gnosis at GnosticNYC.com. Coming up for future shows, make sure that you catch us on 11-6, November 6, where Bishop Laney and I will be talking about the Gospel of Thomas. Again, thank you so much, uh, Bishop Garver, for being on the show tonight. Laney, you want to follow us out with the end credits? Absolutely. This has been a production of Gnostic NYC. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends. Click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily represent the views of Gnostic NYC or any other organization. No animals, especially with this show, <laughs> were, were harmed during the, the production of the show. And uh, for more talk gnosis, tune in every Wednesday for a new episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, and thank you.